Hi everyone, welcome to Global Snacks and Facts. I'm Ann and I'm a librarian at the Lake Hazel branch. We've done this program a few times in person where we focus on different countries and cultures, only we typically call it Global Games and Snacks. And we usually play a game or do an activity from a different country or culture and then we um, prepare um, like a popular dish. So some of the things we've done is we've we did um, one about Korea where we listened to K-pop and played this sort of like hacky sack game called Jianzi. Uh, we also um, did one about India once where we made naan and we did Rangoli sand art and talked about Diwali. So unfortunately, since we can't meet in person, it's a little difficult to play a game. So today I prepared for you just a few facts about the country we're going to talk about and then um, we'll have a recipe at the end. So today we're gonna talk about Thailand, which is also called the Land of Smiles. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna cover a few little facts about the country, and then I will show you a recipe to make your own traditional Thai dessert, mango sticky rice. In case you aren't familiar, Thailand is located in Southeast Asia. You can see it's kind of nestled there between Myanmar, Laos, and Cambodia. Um, in addition to the mainland, Thailand also has 1,430 islands, um, many of which are popular tourist spots. Thailand is also the only country in Southeast Asia that was never colonized by Europeans. Its name in the Thai language literally translates to land of the free. The people of Thailand are typically happy and quick with a smile. They are a peaceful culture that prefer harmony over conflict. And this is why Thailand is often referred to as the land of smiles. Buddhism is considered the national religion of Thailand with about 95% of the population practicing it. Thailand has the third largest Buddhist population in the world with only China and Japan ahead of them. Signs of the religion can be found all over the country, including a population of over 300,000 Buddhist monks residing there, as well as around 3,500 Buddhist temples. So here are two things that you'll see if you ever go to Thailand. Um, most of their homes are built on stilts to prevent flooding during the rainy season. During the drier months, this area is used for storage or just hanging out. Another common occurrence in Thailand are floating markets. Um, this is because the areas next to rivers were settled first and the river was considered a highway where people um, would get their goods to be transported. Uh, while today travel is obviously more common by land, um, there are still many floating markets in Thailand that are enjoyed by both tourists and locals alike. I mentioned temples earlier, so here is an example of three of the Buddhist temples you might find in Thailand. Sanctuary of Truth, Watai Mahatat in Sokotai Historical Park, and the Temple of the Emerald Buddha. The people in Thailand love a good party, and there are many celebrations and festivals in different areas of, of the country. The Sokran Water Festival is the largest festival in Thailand and is celebrated all over the country. Songkran in Thai means to move or change place. And this festival originally started because the Thai people believe that water is spiritually purifying and it cleanses you of any bad luck and grievances from the past year and blesses you with fortune and happiness for the year ahead. The festival origin originated with locals collecting water that had been poured over Buddhist statues for cleansing. This was then used to bless village elders and family members by trickling it over their shoulders. Uh, since then, it has developed into more of a big, basically nationwide water fight. And so it occurs in April, which is the hottest month in Thailand. And it's common to see these wild, chaotic scenes of people with water guns and hoses and buckets, um, just splashing each other and having a great time. Thailand is a popular tourist destination, uh, which makes sense because there, it's a beautiful place with a lot of amazing things to see and do. Um, approximately 6 million tourists visit Thailand each year. Uh, some popular attractions include um, all of the 
islands off the mainland as well as the Buddhist temples, which are open to the public as long as you come modestly dressed. Thailand is home to more than 10% of the world's animals. There are more than 285 mammal species living in Thailand. It is home to both the smallest and the largest animals in the world, the smallest there being the bumblebee bat, which um, weighs approximately as much as a dime or um, two Skittles. That's how small the bumblebee bat is. Its counterpart, the world's largest animal, is the whale shark, which can be found in the waters around Thailand. Whale sharks can, go, can grow to be up to 33 feet long and weigh around 41,000 pounds. In addition to these two, Thailand also has one of the largest elephant populations in the world. It is home to a wide variety of snakes, including the largest snake in the world, the reticulated python, and the largest poisonous snake, the king cobra. Just something to keep in mind if you are ever thinking about visiting. Like most cultures, food is an incredibly important part of Thai culture. In Thailand, meals are commonly served family style and it is tradition to let the older ladies at the table choose the dishes for everyone. Everyone is given a plate with rice and then the dishes are served continuously throughout the meal. So it's recommended that you sample small portions of each dish and then can go back for more if you want to and there's enough food left. You might assume that all this food is eaten with chopsticks, which is common in other Asian cultures. However, in Thailand, chopsticks are only used for noodle dishes. Spoons and hands are the go-to utensils for eating. Food is typically pushed onto your spoon with a fork and then you eat it with the spoon. You never eat it off the fork. And then it's common to eat sticky rice um, by forming it into little clumps or balls and just eating it with your hand. Here are some examples of Thai dishes. Tom Yum Goon is a spicy shrimp dish. Som Tam is a green papaya salad that is really nice and light and fresh. Tom Kuk Gai is a sweet and savory coconut chicken soup. And then uh, probably the most common noodle dish that you've heard of, um, Pad Thai. Now I'm gonna show you how to make mango sticky rice, which is a really popular dessert in Thailand. So as you can see, here are the ingredients for your mango sticky rice. Um, it's a pretty basic recipe, but you will definitely want to find sweet rice, glutinous rice, or sticky rice. So some they're called, it's called all of those things, but they're basically the same kind of rice. Um, but it's definitely different from a regular white rice or a jasmine rice. It's got a little bit of a harder outer shell. And then when you cook it, it um, sticks together, hence the name sticky rice. So, so you'll want a cup of that, one and a half cups of water, a cup of coconut milk, a quarter cup of brown sugar. You could also use white sugar for this if you don't have brown sugar. And then one to two ripe mangoes. And you definitely wanna make sure they are ripe. So the first step when making mango sticky rice is to soak the rice. Uh, this helps the rice absorb the moisture so it cooks more evenly. Um, I soaked mine for about an hour before I cooked it and it, it turned out pretty well. So once the rice is done soaking, the next step is to cook the rice. Um, I used a rice cooker for mine, but if you don't have a rice cooker, you can cook it on the stove like you would any other rice. Um, just place the rice in water, either in a saucepan or your rice cooker. If you're using the stove, let it simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes until the rice is tender and the water has absorbed. The next step is to make the sauce. Uh, over medium heat, you'll want to combine coconut milk, sugar, and a pinch of salt into a saucepan and let it simmer for a few minutes. You want to try not to let it boil because um, that might uh, take away some of the coconut flavor and you want it to be nice and rich and coconutty. When your sauce is ready, you're going to want to remove it from the heat and then stir in your rice. So here, um, if you want to, before you stir in the rice, you can set aside some of the sauce, which you'll use to drizzle over your final dish, or you can skip that part and just use all the sauce um, to let the rice soak in. So you'll want it to soak for about an hour and the rice will absorb all of that delicious, sweet, coconutty sauce. 
So while your rice is soaking up all of that delicious sauce, you can get your mangoes ready. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to cut up a mango. If you're not familiar, mangoes have seeds surrounded by a husk right in the middle of them. So you'll want to start by cutting the fleshy sides off of the seed, leaving you with two sides of the fruit. You'll then want to cut a grid shaped pattern into each side and then fold the fruit inside out. From there, you can easily cut the chunks off of the peel and then your mango is ready to go. So once your rice has soaked up all that sauce and your mango is cut, you can put your dish together. So you'll wanna scoop some rice into a bowl and then top it with mango chunks. If you set aside some of that sauce, now's the time to drizzle it over the top of all of that. And then if you would like and you have them, you can garnish it with some sesame seeds. And that's it. Your mango sticky rice is ready to eat. Thanks for watching today, everyone. If you're interested and want to learn more, here are some of the websites I use to compile the facts. And then there is um, the, re the recipe for mango sticky rice there at the bottom. If you're interested in more of our teen virtual events, next week we'll have a tutorial on how to make your own cake balls. And then on August 6th, we will have a live superhero trivia on Zoom. So if you're interested in that, make sure to call or email your branch to get the Zoom link. Hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. Have a great day. Bye.